Hey everybody, welcome to my suburban oasis. My name is Soleil and I garden here in zone 5B in mid-Michigan and I'm excited because it's so beautiful outside today and we don't have any snow in the forecast. So I'm going to show you how to clean up some Virginia today. We're going to trim it back. It's getting ready to bloom and I want those blooms to be able to show really well. Some of the Virginia does tend to get a little bit scraggly um, over winter and so we'll clean it up. It'll look beautiful. We're going to plant a few of these violas and pansies and uh, we will also do a little fertilization of my blueberry bushes. So let's get going. This is a Virginia plant right here and this is the bloom that's starting to come up. But as you can see over the winter, some of the old foliage really starts to get a little bit tattered from all of the wind and snow and ice. So we're just going to clean these up a little bit. And to do that, it's real simple. I just pull back some of the nice new leaves, go right down to where this bad leaf kind of gets in the base and clip it out. So we'll go ahead and clean up this row of Virginia and show you what it looks like afterwards. Virginia is a plant that is really quite hardy. I believe it's hardy down to zone four. And I will double check that for you and put something on the screen if that's not accurate. But it is a semi evergreen in our climate. And it looks a little bit like lettuce to me, but it's really beautiful because of the really large leaves that it has. These will begin pushing out new growth. And by trimming back this old growth, all of the new leaves that are forming in the center that are coming up with the beautiful flowers will also push through. So let me keep on uh, doing this row and we'll show you what it looks like. Now is a great time to be dividing some of your perennials and I did that with the Spurginia and I planted them. So actually trimming off some of this old foliage will help their roots get established as well. All right, well, I have finished that task really nice and easy and fast. And I think it looks nice and clean now. As I was doing it, my husband commented how drastic of a pruning job it is. But really, this does some great rejuvenation. And as you can see, it allows those flower buds to begin to push up through all of that foliage. And they're going to come out, and they will just shine so much more. And then we will get some really nice and beautiful new green leaves to go along with that and it will look like a whole new plant again. I planted two blueberries and they're doing pretty good here, but I definitely do not have really acidic soil. So one of the things blueberries really like is acidic soil. And I grew them last year in pots and that makes it really easy to control the acidity of the soil that they're in. But um, now I have them in the ground and I'm actually trying to pull out an old dead piece of kale here. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Okay. And what I'm doing right now is just kind of pulling back the mulch because I have this organic soil acidifier that is really good. It's good for hydrangeas, it's good for blueberries, um, all sorts of things that require acid soil. And I'm just going to take a couple handfuls of this and put it around the drip line. Oops, there's a worm, a couple of them. 
And then I'm going to scratch it into the soil a bit, kind of work it in with my hands. And as it rains and the worms eat it, it will go right into the soil and help to make it more acidic and feed this blueberry bush. I'm going to do a little bit more here. I'm going to go pretty heavy on it just because I haven't done it at all since I planted them. And it's still really early on in the season, so I want to make sure they have plenty. And then I'll cover it back up with a little bit of mulch. And we'll do the same with the other one. Hopefully they'll like their new home in this garden bed. The other thing to know about these blueberry bushes is they are planted in a no-dig garden bed. So I created this garden bed not last fall, but the fall before using leaves and ashes from my fire pit and mulch and just covered up the grass after cutting it really low. So it doesn't have many years of being established and having good soil. So it's really important that I continue to amend it and add organic matter to it over time. But it looks so much better than it did the first year and even last year. I can tell that the soil has become more airy. And I think it's only going to continue to improve over time. Okay, I think that looks good. Let's go plant some uh, pansies and violas. All right, I think these flowers are so pretty. They're gonna lighten up this area quite a bit. I have a beautiful Japanese fern that is in here that is dormant right now from over the winter. It's a perennial and it comes back every year. And the colors go so well with some of these violas and pansies. I wanted to somewhat recreate the look that I had last year. So these are the Penny Beaconsfield Violas. I'm going to use a couple of those. When this fern comes up, the violas and the pansies really do a nice job of kind of coming up through that foliage. So I'm just going to plant these around the outside. And what I do to keep this looking good throughout the season, because it's in shade, these violas and the pansies can stay in here for most of the season. And I just use a liquid fertilizer like miracle Grow, and it does a really good job for me. So I'm going to put some viola violas towards the front, and then I'll put a couple of pansies in the back as well. The planter will not look super full. Um, I'm going to pinch back some of these violas as well because the blooms are a little bit spent. That will help to push out some new growth and some new blooms. And what I find is that if I fertilize them and they're in this shady area, they last even throughout some of the warmer months and still look good. So if you worry about buying this type of plant that are really considered cold weather annuals in in many places and spending too much money on them just know that you can find uses for them in the shade if you plant them in the sun you can also move them into the shade later if you start them out in a different area put a couple of these little white ones these are penny purple picotee and I did a video recently where I talk a little bit more about the size of these and what they're called. So you can check that out if you're interested. And let's put a couple of these really dark pansies that are called Delta Premium Pure Violets in the back. The Japanese fern has some green and purple and maroon hints to it and 
it really lends itself well to these colors. And then we'll put one more back over here. And again, I know it doesn't look like much right now, but um, I love having these colors here. It's going to lighten it up for a little bit, and it's going to look absolutely beautiful in just a few weeks as that fern wakes up and begins to uh, really fill out the pot. This urn also has perennials in it, um, and it has a hosta right now. So we can't see it, but it's definitely there. This is where the crown is. So we're going to plant around it with some, some pansies and some violas just to help fill in some space and make a little color as we await the emergence of that beautiful hosta. I planted this hosta last year, so it hasn't had a lot of time to really mature. So this year, hopefully, it will really emerge and become much more full in this pot. I really want to use some of these lighter colored pansies in this pot just because I think they'll help brighten up this corner. This pansy is called the Mammoth Pink Berry and it has a pinkish purple and white look to it. And because these are larger, there's only three of them per cell pack, but it gives them a little bit more of an established look than perhaps some of the violas. So after I get a few of these in, we're gonna fill in between each of them with a little bit of the violas. I'm trying really to keep these planters nice and simple. I may change them out. I'm growing on some caladium, so we'll see how those go because I really want to use them to help brighten up this shady area as well. All right, let's fill in some of the gaps now with some of these violas. You can put as many flowers in containers as you want or as few as you want. Remember, some of them will bush out more than others. And some of them will last longer than others, but they all will like good fertilization being in pots. I think these look really cute being mixed together. I'm just picking off the ones that are about spent blooms. And right now the soil is pretty moist, so I'm not even going to water them. But in a couple of days, I will come in with a watering can and some liquid fertilizer just to give them a nice boost to get them going. So nice and cute and super simple and um, I think it's going to be really pretty as it fills out a little bit and then when the hosta comes up it will cover up some of these so I'll pull them right back out and use them in another area in the garden. After I finished I really felt like I was missing a little bit of something so I thought I'd come back in and add a little bit of moss in these containers and that just really did the trick for me. I feel like it really looks a whole lot better and it just looks a little bit like a forest floor. early in the spring when the flowers are just starting to come up. 
Over here, I even felt a little bit more foresty and thought I would add a few pine cones in addition to the moss. And I really like the way it turned out. It almost looks like a floral arrangement. Isn't that pretty? I can only imagine when the ferns come through how that will look as well. What do you think about the addition? I really enjoy the way that they turned out. Well, that's the end of the action part of this video, but I thought that I would just take a minute to show you some of these beautiful hellebores because they really are glowing and gorgeous today and they are just maturing really well. There's quite a few of them that are fully in bloom and I even have some daffodils that are finally starting to come out so I thought that I would show you some flowers. Well thanks for joining me in the garden today. I hope you enjoyed some of the things that we're doing. We definitely have a lot on the to-do list and unfortunately due to my recent knee surgery I'm still working on trying to get to them all. So slowly but surely we'll continue to take on the task and enjoy our time in the garden. Thanks again for joining me today and we'll see you next time. Bye!